Hi, this is Andrew Steinman, and I'm going to talk to you now about ways to flip instruction. And just to highlight, this video is going to be much shorter than the previous three videos combined. Uh, that section ended up being a lot longer than I was expecting, and you can uh, now expect the next uh, videos to be much shorter. So let's go ahead and get into it. So I uh, talked about this a little bit earlier about uh, flip classroom and homework. So when you are flipping your instruction, the videos do not have to be homework. Um, really, the, the videos are just a way for you to deliver that direct instruction uh, to students in a more accessible manner. And that can happen when students are watching the video at home, but it also can happen in class. And um, something that you can do is... Um, have students watching those videos during class and I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in the next uh, slide but if you do decide that you want to have students watch the videos for homework uh, there's a couple ways that you can get around this uh, if students have limited or no access to a uh, computer or internet at home so something you can have students do is come in before or after school uh, to maybe watch the videos excuse me, on your computer in class. Or you can maybe provide that video to them on a flash drive that they could use to watch at home using a non-internet connected uh, device, such as a laptop or even an Xbox. Um, and uh, another option, too, is to have students come in you know, during lunch. Uh, your videos should be relatively short, and therefore uh, students should be able to watch them uh, during the lunch period and still have time to uh, maybe eat and chat with some of their friends. So that's just some things to be thinking about when creating your videos and whether or not you're going to have them for homework. And if you do decide to have them for homework, some ways to get around um, the issues that students might have with accessing the videos at home. Uh, now I want to talk about student devices. And so... Um, let's say that you want students to watch the videos in class. This doesn't mean that every single student has to have a device to watch the videos. There's different ways that you can structure your class um, to uh, incorporate the videos uh, with limited devices. Uh, now, one way to go about it is to implement a bring your own device or BYOD um, model in your class. So this means that if students have maybe an iPod or an iPad or a laptop or just any device that can watch used that can be used to watch these videos, have them those have the students bring those devices to class and use those to watch the videos. This might be a way to get yourself closer to a one-to-one -one ratio where every student has a device. Now, let's say that even with or without BYOD, you still don't have a one-to-one -one ratio of devices to students. You can still use some different uh, methods to have students watch those videos. Uh, one is to just simply have students watch the videos in pairs. Uh, you might be watching this video in a pair right now. And if you are doing so, you probably only have one headset between the two of you. So you've learned that having enough headsets for everybody is really, really important. And Craig and I apologize if you do not have enough headsets. Uh, we were able to bring as many as we could from KenISD, and uh, unfortunately, we still did not have enough for every single person. So um, having students watch the videos uh, in pairs or in groups might be a way to do it. And um, if you're able to spread those devices out in the classroom too, you might be able to avoid having to use headsets. Because really, if you have students sitting next to each other watching videos at different uh, you know, spots in the video, it gets really noisy and confusing uh, to be having those, uh, to have those videos be playing all at the same time. And uh, the last idea is, you know, if you don't have enough devices for students and maybe you don't have enough headsets that students can be um, all watching the videos at the same time, one concept is to have different stations in your classroom. And so uh, you could have a station where you have the devices uh, with headsets that students are watching the videos, the instructional videos, but then you can have another station. Um, and this could be 
what I call an application station where students apply what they learned uh, in the learning station with uh, the videos. However, it could also be another learning station. And maybe this is where you are at. And yes, you would be providing direct instruction to students, uh, which means you wouldn't have as much free time to move around and help students with their individual needs. However, you'll be working with a smaller group of students and therefore, hopefully you can provide that, that more individualized instruction, or at least I guess you have a better chance at being able to deliver um, that instruction to students. Uh, then in the last station, again, it doesn't have to be this, but this is just what I have in my model here is, um, it could be an assessment station. And so students are moving from the learning station, then they apply their knowledge, and then they assess themselves. And I have a picture of a computer there because you could have some online assessments where students are um, getting assessed, getting that instant feedback, and then based on the assessment, they know if they should move on to the next lesson or if they should maybe move back, try practicing, um, or even going back to the learning station for that lesson. And even without technology, you can do that assessment station. You can have more of a paper pencil assessment. It's just that students won't be able to get that instant feedback. And so they might need to just move on to the next lesson. And then after you uh, assess, um, you grade that assessment, you can give that feedback and provide guidance on where the student should go. So those are just some ideas of um, how to manage the student devices if they're limited in your class. Um, there's a video from John Bergman and Aaron Sams, again, the godfathers of uh, the flipped classroom model. And they have this video about overcoming common hurdles. And so I thought it really went well with um, the uh, things that I was talking about with managing homework versus non-homework and um, student devices. So this addresses those as well as some other um, common hurdles. So it's a short video. Um, I just want you to watch that video after watching this uh, video. Okay, and then at, so after you finish this video and then watch the uh, video with John Bergman and Aaron Sams, I want you to now discuss another uh, question with your partner. And that question is, what hurdle resonates with you? From the video with John Bergman and Aaron Sams, so what hurdle resonates with you and how might you overcome it? So you don't have to have you know, the answer to the, uh, the hurdle that you want to tackle, but you should at least have some idea of one way you might be able to address that, that issue. Um, so what I want you to do is discuss that with your partner, and then after you have uh, finished that discussion, go back to the Padlet and edit your note that you added. And I want you to share the hurdle that you um, are thinking about and how you might address that hurdle. And the big idea here is that you're gonna be collecting all of your thoughts in that one note. And not only will you have access to that note, but everyone else will be able to see it as well. And I know it's a little bit of a scary thought, but it's gonna be really helpful to the other people here in this session, because they're gonna be able to see the different ideas that you have. And they might be able to say, you know what, that's a great idea, and I wanna use that in my classroom. Or they might say, man, that's a really interesting uh, idea for, um, addressing that that hurdle or issue with flipped instruction in your classroom, but have you thought about this? So um, it might open up a conversation for you to have with another teacher about how to address some of these hurdles. After you finish uh, this discussion piece and posting your thoughts uh, to your note in the Padlet, you're gonna move on to the next lesson, which is flipping with gradual release of responsibility.